and here we go. All right, so today we are going to learn about adding pages to our consumer site. So I wanted to show you guys a couple of different options here. I know that some of you before have seen that I have the Homekeeper blog widget on my agent site. And so this was where I added it originally. Um, I do have a previous video up on this. This has actually changed. The way that we add this has actually changed. So I'm going to show you guys how you can add this today as well as their preferred vendors blog widget. And then I'm also going to show you how you can add some third party sites. So for instance, whatever areas that you work in a lot, you may want to post like things to do in Winston-Salem or things to do in Greensboro. And you might have a really great place that you look for that. I know that one of the places in Winston-Salem that is good is Smitty's Notes. So you can actually see that I've added that here, things to do in Winston-Salem. And that will open up Smitty's Notes, which does allow third-party embedding. So you do wanna make sure that you're following any rules. Um, what you'll see is when you add it to your page, if it doesn't allow it, it's not going to work. So then you know, I just can't use this third-party page, right? Um, they do allow embedding. So you can add that straight to your agent site. So before we move forward with how we add those two things, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, Monica, can we start at the beginning? So our consumer site, mm -hmm. is that if someone enters jimconnor.kw.com? That is, is correct. That the site we're describing? Yes. So it's going to take you here. Like this is monicaperry.kw.com. Okay. So when we first get these set up, um, we have our homepage, which of course is the most important with our search bar. And then we have some like an about us page and things like that, that we can add um, or that got added for us. Three pages, a contact us page, an about us page, and then our homepage are the three that we start with. So this is how to add additional pages. Good? But it's sound good? All right. So in order to add additional pages to our sites, we are going to come into command and we're going to move into our applet in the lower left corner. The lowest one down there for now is consumer. We're going to click on the consumer applet. And so Jim, since you came in first, would you rather see how to add homekeeper stuff first or how to add third party sites first? Which would you prefer uh, to see? Um, homekeeper, does that, does that charge me? No, nope, it's free. And what can people do with homekeeper? So what it's gonna add is a blog. That's what we're adding when we add the homekeeper blog. So it's going to show like better garbage disposal care tips, what are smart locks, sliding barn doors. So it's essentially blog content that is, um, so say that I like what's new in garage door styles. So they're on my website. They want to know more about garage door styles. They click it. It's going to take them into a blog about it. And on the left-hand side, it is branded to me. Awesome. Okay. Good? Yep. All right. Yeah, let's we'll add that one. Fantastic. So you go to Homekeeper, which Keeper does not have your third R, just to throw that out there. And you can set up a free site with your Keller Williams. It's got your info. You add your headshot, your company logos, all that kind of fun stuff there. So that's a free setup. And when I'm clicking in, logging in as a realtor, right? That's how we're logging in. You'll see I have all of these things I can use. One of those is my widgets. So this is how to embed Homekeeper on your website. So we're going to click embed widget. The first tab is my trusted pros because that's how Homekeeper gets paid, right? Um, trusted professionals, roofers, HVAC companies, they pay to be on Homekeeper. So you can select which pros that you choose from Homekeeper. And you can actually embed this on your website as well. 
and the one that I'm showing you right now is the blog widget. So they essentially work the same way. So once we come here, we are going to see my blog widget JavaScript right here at the top. We want to copy that code. Okay, so that code is now on our clipboard. Back in command, and you guys feel free to stop me if you have questions, okay? I'm gonna try my best to move intentionally at a slow pace so you can catch up, take notes, whatever you need. But if you need something, stop me and ask me, okay? So now we're in command, in consumer, which again is our last applet on the left. And we are going to click create new page in the upper right corner. And what we are doing is adding a page on our agent site, right? We can also do a standalone landing page, but in this example, we're adding a page on our agent site. So we're going to go ahead and create page. And it's going to take us here to this web page builder. We always want to make sure that we rename in the upper left corner. So I'm just going to call this one my blog test 3-12-2021, so I know which one it is. Of course, you guys could just name it my blog, Jim's blog, Monica's blog, whatever you want to call it. Ready good? Yep. Great. So we always have to have a widget. So for this one, one of the best ones would be the contact form. You could also maybe use the download my app form. Either one is fine. So we're going to pull over the contact form. And then down towards the bottom, we're going to expand where it says content blocks. And that's going to give us the ability to add an image or a text box. And we want to add the text box. So I'm gonna click and hold and pull it over up above my contact us widget. So you can see the green line is showing up wherever we are dropping, right? So now we have our text box and our contact us widget at the bottom. So that code that we copied from Homekeeper, which was again, the my blog widget JavaScript version, and we clicked copy. We are going to take that back here into this text box. Go ahead and get rid of that insert your text here by highlighting it and deleting. And then we're going to paste that Homekeeper blog JavaScript that we took from their site. Everybody feel good? What if we already have a contact us thing on our consumer site? That's okay. You know, think about it at the bottom. If you're looking through different pages of various websites, they usually do somewhere down at the bottom have either like a contact us form or a support form or something, right? So it's just down, it pushes it way down to the bottom. So you can see back here, like they're really looking at the content, but we just have to have that widget. So it's actually way down here at the bottom, right? So it's okay if you have it somewhere else, it's not gonna hurt it. Okay. Good? Yep. Okay. And someone who fills that out, it'll go to our command. That is correct. It will create a contact in command for you, okay? So we are going to save the changes. We're going to say, yes, I would like to continue to my site and app settings to publish this page, yes. And now that's going to take us here to our site and app settings, right where we need to be. This is great because this didn't used to do this. We had to go through and get to this point. Now this takes us straight here. So now that we're here, our page is already built, we are going to come over here to the left and click the add page button. Okay, it's gonna pick up any pages that you've created. We're going to take, that's why it's important to rename them, right? So this is the one we just created at the top and we are going to click continue. Okay, so now that's done. We want to give it a title. I'm gonna name it Monica's blog test because I'm going to remove it after we finish. We wanna give it a URL slug. So that is monicaperry.kw.com forward slash what. So I'm just going to name it my blog, okay? 
you can name it how you choose. And then SEO description, you know, you can put as much as you want down in here. And blogging, you know, whatever you want to put down here so that it pushes you up in the SEO description. And now that I have those things done, I added the page, I named the page, I named the slug, gave it a little bit of SEO, and I'm going to click save. Settings now, for when, when you did the URL slug, mm -hmm. all you did is the unique text that will be appended on. Right, at the very end. Okay. Yeah, so now it's monicaperry.kw.com forward slash my blog. You can see it highlighted right below. Okay. Yep. So now back on my agent site, I'm going to go to the home screen. I'm going to go ahead and refresh just to make sure that it added. You will see there's the one that I just named Monica's blog test. Right. So when I click on that, there's the blog. So uh, go back a page because that's that's your home screen, right? Correct. Is isn't the blog automatically appended below? It's right here under the different pages, right? So here's my about me page. Here is my page that talks about my position and that I'm still an agent. Here are where you can read my reviews. Right, yeah. so this is where we're adding pages. Right. I have it where people can schedule an appointment. And then we added the blog page. Is there a way if, let's say you just adored uh, Smitty's notes mm -hmm. and about Winston. Yeah. Is there a way to permanently append it to? The home screen? Yeah. No. The home screen is always going to be reserved for search. Because if you look at our competitors, right, what's the home screen? Search. Search. Because that is the main driver for traffic to your website, right? Is search. But all right, go back to realtor.com. Mm -hmm. See there, you can do buy, rent, pre-approval. Right, because that's how they have their site set up. And ours doesn't offer any options. Yep, for sale, for rent. Right, those are our options on our site. We can add featured listings down here. Branded to us at the bottom. So those are the options that we have. And keep okay. in mind, this is still, we've never made an update to our agent sites yet. So I have a feeling as we progress into our now scheduled updates and improvements, right? They're not going to be at random. They're going to be intentional and scheduled. We will see some improvements to this, right? But this is still in its first iteration. Right. So this has not ever been updated since it was first established. Okay. Yep. So okay. those are two good ones that I'll, I'll want to add. Is there a third or a fourth that you think you see people getting value from? I think um, the one I'm going to show you next is how to add any third party site that allows embedding. Okay. And so that's from Homekeeper. We, we did that and you see it's branded to you after you set up your Homekeeper, right? You want to set up your Homekeeper first before you add the blog to your agent site. But so say you do like Smitty's Notes, which I do, right? We're going to go to Smitty's Notes, which is a lot, a lot of stuff about Winston-Salem, right? I'm just going to go to his website. And he's very good at capture. He's automatically going to have this thing pop up and ask if I want to subscribe to his emails. But I've already done that, so I don't need to do it. He might not do it today. He did it earlier. Okay, so now what we need from here, from here is this up at the top in the URL bar, the smittysnotes.com, 
we need to copy that to our keyboard. Okay, everybody feel good? Or to our clipboard rather. Yep. So now we're gonna go through similar process. We're gonna come into command. This one's just a little, it's got a little bit different. You're actually gonna be able to call yourself a code writer. And I wanna shout out to Garrett Stewart of Command Consult. He actually shared this code with us. So I'll show you where to get it and I'll also drop it for you in the chat, but I wanted to make sure that I gave him his due rewards for doing this. So we're gonna go to commandconsult.com. This is where I found that code. I am not a code writer, so I'm glad that he is. I must have spelled something wrong. Yep, I put in two O's. Commandconsult.com. And under the more button, he has a resources. Okay. And I'm going to drop this code in the chat for you too. And so when you go under resources, you want this code for sites and landing pages. So I'm going to click on that. And we're going to copy this code and save it somewhere that you can use it again because you might find another website that you think is really valuable, right? So I'm gonna post this into the chat for you. Go ahead and save it somewhere to your computer or if you ever forget where you got it, you're going to go to Command Consult, More, Resources, and then Code for Site and Landing Pages. That's where I got this, okay? So now back here in command, we're back down at our consumer on the left. Okay, we're going to create a new page again. Again, it is going to be on my agent site, right? We're going to click create page. Again, we want to name it. I'll just name it Smitty's Notes Test because I'll be removing it later. Okay, so now we're back where we were. And we're going to do essentially the same thing. We're going to pull over one of the widgets. So say you wanted it to be the download your app widget, that would be fine. We're going to expand our content blocks, grab the text field, drop it on the left. But this time we are going to capture Garrett's code, which we have and paste it in. Okay, so now we have Garrett's code, and I just hit the wrong button. I'll try that one more time. So it's here. Now you see in between the two quotes, it says your website here. So whatever third-party site we are trying to embed, we are going to embed it here. And so in this instance, we're using smittysnotes.com. So we're going to copy that. And you copy the whole HTTP colon, colon, backslash. Yep. And then you're going to replace your website here, leave the quotes, paste the site. Okay. So now we need to configure our widgets. This time we're going to click on widgets. There you go, the website popped in. We're going to configure widgets. All it is is this one, it's actually done for you, but I always like to make sure that it has a little green check mark next to it. And we're going to save the changes. So you can see it's gonna have Smitty's notes, just like his website shows. And then it's got my download, my app widget at the bottom because we do have to have at least one widget on the page. We're going to save those changes. Would you like to continue and publish? Yes, I would. And then again, you would go through the same thing. Add the page, pick the one you created, click continue, Smitty's notes, or things to do in Winston-Salem because that's what he posts about, right? Give it a slug. Two, two. And remember on slugs, there's no spaces, right? And we'll click save. 
And same thing is back on our website. We will now have dun, 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 Smitty's Notes. And people can go straight to Smitty's Notes from our website. And it's gonna embed it right there. So other ideas of things you could do. I mean, you could literally look up things to do in Greensboro. I know I have some Greensboro agents in here and that will be watching the recording. So TripAdvisor has some things to do in Greensboro, right? So if I liked what it's recommending on here, let's open it up and see how it looks. So some cultural and theme, um, theme tours, art galleries, antique stores, monuments and statues, Greensboro Science Center, right? So they have all kinds of stuff in here to do in Greensboro, 15 of them. So we could actually take this code and do the same thing that we just did with Smitty's Notes and embed it into our website. And so, like I said, as long as it, once you take the steps, if the website shows up the way that Smitty's Notes did, then you can use it. If it does not show up when you're doing the third party site, then you know it's not, it doesn't have those permissions allowable, right? So you yeah, have to the, move on to a different site. The, the site, the host of the site has to have configured it for us to be able to leverage it. Correct, correct. So how, how's that? Everybody feel good? Yeah, that's as, yeah. That's as exciting. It's not so bad, right? It's not so bad, especially when you have nice people that share some code with us. Um, and then with the homekeeper, you don't have to use, they already wrote the code for you, right? So you're not having to take somebody else's code. That code's right. written on the homekeeper site. Can we go back to the list where we found the homekeeper? Mm -hmm. Over here. So when you first log into Homekeeper, you're going to tell it you're a realtor. Oh no no no! The before this in command where we Over clicked here. on. Over here. Yeah, I I don't see the list of the widgets we can install. Oh, so you want me to get into creating? Okay, here we go. So we're going to click the create a new page button on my agent site, create page. And there's your widgets. And then it popped up an option, one of, the first of which was Homekeeper. What, what are the other options that it popped no, up? No, not here. So Homekeeper, we were just getting their code, right? We were here, we clicked on my widgets, embed widget, and they have my trusted pros widget and right, my blog. But when you started this session, you mm -hmm. said, Jim, you were first on, so pick the widget you want to do. And you read from a list and Homekeeper was at the top. Yeah, I said Homekeeper or adding third party sites. And so those are the only two options there? Oh, there are lots of options. I'm just showing you how to do two. So with Homekeeper, you can either do the My Trusted Pros widget, okay, or the blog. Those are your right. two choices from Homekeeper. For third-party sites, if, if you can find something you like and it works, then you can use it. So like um, haunted places in Winston-Salem. So like local haunts, TripAdvisor, Winston-Salem ghost tours, Right, they have like all these North Carolina haunted houses. So say it, Halloween, you wanted to do, you know, Woods of Terror, show people where all the haunted houses are, then you could put this on there, right? Have a link to the haunted houses for the year. So as far as third party sites go, anything that you can look up, you can add as long as it allows it. And you won't really know if it allows it until you paste the code in to the website, to your, where you're building your site here, right. right? So once you put it in that content, in this text block, if it doesn't populate, like let's see if this 15 things to do in Greensboro works. 
if you paste it in here and it doesn't work. So again, we need for a third party to have that code from Garrett, which I had in the chat. Got to put that here. Then we have to take the website's URL address and then we have to put it where it says your website here into that code. And it does show up. So then you know it works. They allow embedding so you can use it, right? If it never shows up, then it's not going to work. Right. Good? Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, your imagination is your limit on the third party sites you could add. So you could do things to do in Louisville, Clemens, Poptown, Greensboro, Asheville, you know, if you like skiing, if you like the beaches, you know, whatever that you want to add. I mean, when you live here in the triad, you have access to a whole lot of stuff. So right. whatever you would like to add there, you can do it. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so if you do start a blog through Homekeeper, is it best to like keep everything through Homekeeper then? Like, like what if so you want to add like from your Homekeeper, you're not actually blogging. They have blog content that's readily available to you as an agent to use. As okay. far as if you want to write your own blog, Cody? Or just add, like, use some generic and a combination of my own, or if I want, like. Yeah, if you want, it, you can't add your own blog content to Homekeeper. It's just whatever they have set up. I think it's, Cody's talking about his preferred vendors. I well, think he's talking about blog content. You're talking about writing an article, right? Yeah, if I had, if I wanted to write one article, but the majority of it is my homekeeper stuff. Yeah, you would have to have two. You would have to say like my homekeeper blog or homekeeper articles as one page. And then you'd have to have your blog separately set up like as a little website, which you can do. There are numerous companies that you can write blog content through. And then you would have to make a page that said Cody's blog. Personal blog, yeah. Right, okay. you'd have to. And then you would set your blog up as the third party with the code. The Homekeeper stuff, they, they actually made it intentionally for agents to be able to embed it onto their agent websites. Right, so they already wrote out the code for us. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely not there yet. I was just wondering. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I used to do some blogging myself, but what I would do is put it on. We didn't have all this fancy stuff when I actually did that. So <laughs> I just like put it on Facebook and had like the link, you know, they had to click on the link to get to where my blog was. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. And as far as, I now have a lot of people that ask me about the standalone pages. What are they for? What can I do with them? Um, you can do different things. Like if you just wanted to do a listing. So as a landing page, as a standalone landing page, we're gonna create that and say, we just wanted to bring over the branded header, a listing. scroll down 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 you know what i'm not going to scroll down i'm going to show you all what i actually usually do I'm going to delete that usually what i do because you see how long that listing is whatever i'm going to put at the bottom and the top i do first so branded header at the top i always want my legal footer at the bottom and then i would probably want like a lead capture form so i'm going to put it on the green line in between those two and drop it and then I'm going to pull over that listing widget. Okay. So now that I have that done, I need to have a listing. So obviously, if you had your own listing, you would use your own listing, but I do not. So I'm going to borrow somebody else's listing. Later. My office active listings. Let's see what fun listing we can find today. That looks nice. Sure. 
This looks good. I'm going to borrow this. Let me shout out some credit from Jessica Zombeck Ferris. Thank you, Jessica. And so now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say, you know, test landing page, test listing, landing page. And now I'm going to configure my widgets. So on this one, we have quite a few widgets we've dropped, right? Which is normally what you're going to be doing. I just wanted to show you guys how to add those extra pages. So configure widgets. So I need to browse listing because there's no listing selected. So I'm going to click browse. Let that pop out. And I'm going to use an MLS number because that's what I use from the MLS. I'm going to search. And where is it? Did I copy the number right? Hold on. Please hold. 101 Yes, it did. I don't know why that one's not showing up. Okay. Just kidding. Let me find a different one. She may have just put it in or something. Try that one. Hopefully yours shows up. If it doesn't, let me know and we'll find out. Find out what happened. Let's try this one. Off down. Oh my goodness. None of them are showing up. Maybe I gotta stop using the MLS numbers. Let me try the address. See, this is what happens when you go off script, Monica. I didn't plan on showing you all these pages today. Let's see, property address, and I didn't test them either. Let's try it that way. Okay, there's Millstone Lane and Pop Down. All right. That's not the right one. That is not the right one. Got to look at them. Well, this is just fun. Sorry, y'all. I don't know why this is not working today. But if it was working, I'm just going to pick one so you can see what it would look like. You would pick the correct helpful. listing. Go ahead. It's helpful, Monica, when we see you with things that don't work because then it makes yeah. us feel less crazy. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not y'all usually. <laughs> they could they could be updating something in here. So you would just pick a listing, right? Where's the header image coming from, from the listing or a custom one? Save and apply. So you're going to save and apply on each widget. Now you're going to see it populate the house. Click next. That looks good. Interested, let's talk. I don't feel the need to change it. Work smarter, not harder. Save and apply. Lead forms done. Click next. Legal footer, all that looks good to me. Save and apply. Of course, if there was something wrong right there, you could fix it, right? And so now I've configured all my widgets. They all have a green check. And then I could publish the page and I would have a nice little standalone landing page for the property, right? And then how does that, so you've created this landing page. Mm -hmm. How does it, um, how do you turn it off? <laughs> How to turn it off or on? Off. I can show you. Let me see if I can find a listing that's actually here. I wonder why it's not working. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, okay, so I take a listing. I create a landing page. I, yeah, yeah. I generate it. Mm -hmm. And 45 days from now, it's off market and sold. And Yeah, I know what you mean. We can just okay. turn it off. I'll show you, I wanna actually try, I wanted to show you like an actual listing that was one of ours. There, Abby, thank you. Abby's worked. So we're gonna take Abby's. And there's, see, there you go. There's all the pictures. So if you wanted to change this to look like the kitchen or something like that, then you could. 
So let's save and apply here. That's a really cute house. There you go. So here's this one, okay? Fairway Drive. So another cool thing you could do with this if you so chose, I'll show you. You could actually take this um, little interested let's talk widget, just forward thinking, you're at an open house for this property, for instance. So what if I wanted to take this widget all the way up to the top that says interested let's talk and say welcome home to Pop Town. I don't know. I think that was actually Winston-Salem. But whatever, wherever you're at, use it. So welcome home to Winston-Salem, save and apply. This is at the very top. This is my branded header and stuff, right? Welcome home to Winston-Salem. And for my next one, the listing looks fine. Get on to interested, let's talk. What if I said, please sign in to our open house, save and apply. Why do you not like me today, Widget? See, I shouldn't go off script, y'all. I just shouldn't have done it. But anyway, this usually works. You can put the widget above and you can use this as a sign-in sheet on your, like your tablet, right? Hand them your tablet, they can, put their stuff in, automatically puts them into your command so that you can automatically put them on an open house follow-up plan. And while they're holding your tablet, they can look at, of course, it'd be sanitizing the tablet in between people, right? Little Lysol, little wipe, something like that. They could go through, look at the pictures, look at the statistics on the house. When was it built? How many bedrooms? Yada, yada, yada. Look at some details where they are on a map. Oh, there it is. There's our sign in. It just didn't work because I had already configured it. If you would have done it this way in the first place, put this at the top, it would have worked fine. And so then when they signed in, it would automatically put them into your command database. While you're standing there at the open house, they hand you back the tablet, you wipe it down again. I'm going to go ahead and publish the page so I can show Jim how to unpublish it. Yes, I want to publish it. It might have that odd widget there. And so this is actually going to be a landing page. So it didn't change anything on my agent site, right? It's just by itself. It's its own little page. And so something else you can do, this is the one here at the top. Again, that's why it's important to rename it. I can actually change the URL because look at all that gobbledygook. Nobody wants that. What was this house? 2416 Fairway. So I could actually rename this 2416 Fairway, like so. And then it's got its own little custom URL. And so I would just take people to this website. You want to share it on Facebook. You want to share it in a text message. Check out this listing. That's the website for that specific listing. The contact form would capture their stuff. You can use it as a open house sign-in sheet digitally, right? And now Jim's question, what if it goes off market? Button, off. Are you sure you want the status to go inactive? Yep, done, it's out. Awesome, All right. Right, pretty cool. Could do some market snapshots, maybe. This is old, we'll see if it's still working. So I picked a neighborhood and just did the market snapshot. So you could use that as a standalone landing page, right? Somebody wants to keep an eye on a specific neighborhood. All right, questions, concerns? Uh -huh. Any estimate on when market snapshots will be zip code driven rather than the arcane uh, you can do some market snapshots by zip code. Let me see. Because there were some of them that I, I know that I did it in designs the other day. 
by 27106. And if there's ever something that you're like, does this do this? Just ask me and we'll figure it out. 27106 landing page. Let's try it. I prefer the branded header, the agent branding. I just, I'm not real, I would maybe that at the bottom, just an FYI. I really like the branded header best. So I'm gonna drop that in. And then let's drop in our legal footer, of course, because we wanna say legal or lead form, of course, because we wanna capture data and the market snapshot. Let me see what I can find here. I'm going to configure my widgets. Welcome home. I'm just going to put that in there generically. All that looks great. Cool. Save and apply. Next up. Yeah. Postal code. What's hot in 27106? 27106. Let me see if I can just not select a neighborhood. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. So you could select a neighborhood, right? If you wanted to, say you wanted to do New Sherwood Forest or something, but otherwise you can just skip it. It's not got a red asterisk, so you can skip over it. Okay, while we're here, can you yep. do multiple zip codes? No, it okay. would be like one page, right? Yeah. This one is for T7106. This one's for T7104. Um, yeah. So not you. Yes, you can do multiple pages, but no, you cannot do multiple on the same page. Right. Yeah. Good. Monica, if you're sending um, a neighborhood to someone, mm -hmm. I know you've answered this before, but it's fallen out of my head. Um, if you send multiple neighborhoods, those go through as multiple emails, do they not? Or they don't merge? So if you did like a save search on a contact, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, you would have to do separate, separate save searches. Um, so Allison's talking about in contacts, and I don't mind going off script to show you guys something for this. Um, I'm just going to open another command window. <coughs> Allison is talking about a setting up save searches for your contacts. Now, what will be cool, they're not here yet. They're not here yet. And no, I don't have a date because everybody always asks me for dates. Don't have one. Um, but they did talk about it in family reunion. So I'm okay with saying it. We're going to have, um, what do they call it? Neighborhood highlights or something to that effect. Um, oh, dang it, Monica, brain farted. Um, you're going to be able to set it up where you can set up like Vina Vista, Old Sherwood Forest, New Sherwood Forest, this area, this area, probably zip codes. And you'll be able to, that you won't have to make the custom search just for one person. You'll actually be able to have like a neighborhood profile that you can share, but we don't have them yet. But I think what Allison is talking about, and I'm just going to use Allison's contact card, as long as you don't mind, Allison, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Here, let me use Dakota, just in case, because I am going to put this on YouTube. So if y'all want to call my Yorkie Chihuahua mix, Dakota, on his fake phone number, you can. <laughs> his email's real deal. He's got a real email. So save searches. So Dakota has... Um, this save search, so I have to set up separate save searches, right? So by neighborhood, by zip code. So if he wanted T7106, choose, you know, 400 to 500. And he wants a pool. And he doesn't care about anything else. Next, then I can decide how often he gets his emails, instant, daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. Name this as 27106 search, create. But then I would also have to create him a 27104 search if he wanted that, which most people would be looking in both because they do join, right? I'm in 104, 
you move over one street and you're in 106. So we butt up against each other. So more than likely he would want to have both. So then yes, you would have to set up two. Good. Can I ask a question on yeah. uh, executing a campaign? Sure. So I have campaigns set up uh, to groups of contacts where each group of contacts is less than a hundred people. Okay. But they have something in common. Are you talking about email campaigns? Yes. Mm. I'm gonna tell you, I'm not a huge fan of email campaigns right now. I know that it's gonna get an update and what I've been doing for people with emails, I create the email design and I just send it to them in smart plans, one step smart plans. So I know what you're gonna say, you have less than a hundred people, but it's trying to tell you you can't create a list, right? Cause it's too no, big. No, I'm saying, so I've, I've got them working. Okay. They're going out on a regular basis for a regular period of time. Okay. Uh, but some people are saying they want to unsubscribe and I don't know how to pull them out of a list of a hundred contacts for that campaign. Yeah. I don't have an answer for you, Jim. I'm gonna have to look at it. Um, I stopped using email campaigns a little while ago. I'm not saying I won't again, they're, they're gonna get better. Um, but what I do like about the smart plans is when they unsubscribe, it just doesn't send it. Right. Right. If they unsubscribe from the text, it will still send the email. If they unsubscribe from the email, it would still send the text. If they unsubscribe from both, it just won't send them. Right. All right. So that's what I've been using. But I will look into that and get you an, a definitive answer on how so, to unsubscribe them. I'll tell you my hypothesized solution. And as you're looking in it, if you could just confirm if this would work or not. Okay. So I can go into the email campaign and pull up the recipients and see all hundred recipients. All of those aren't coming through as separate though, right, to people? No, now this is his monthly neighborhood nurture, right? That's what this is. Let me put them on the smart plan because I think I took them off. Um, monthly, yeah, the, in the monthly neighborhood nurture, they just come as a tabbed website. So let me start that now and go to his fake email. Let me take this off the screen real quick. So I don't open my real email. Bear with me for a sec. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so there was his save search. Um, give it a minute for, so this is what the save search looked like. Great news, create a save search for you. Love to hear what you think about these homes. Collections, there, there it is. That's what it's called. That's what's coming out soon is neighborhood collections. And it was gonna drive me nuts if it didn't come to me. It just came to me all of a sudden. Um, let me see, there's the monthly neighborhood update. So all those neighborhoods that I have picked for him, it just says neighborhood trends. You know, these are some neighborhoods that it shows on the home screen. You get three, I think. And then if he clicks see more, then it will take him to his standalone. This is just for him, right? Which is what we've been preaching. One to one instead of one to many, right? It makes things feel more curated to the receiver of the, of the stuff when you're going one-to-one -one with them, just like your Netflix account makes recommendations, your Amazon account makes recommendations. It's a very curated experience and that's what we're trying to give. And so where I picked all those neighborhoods, they're just tabbed at the top of his personal webpage. Yes, please. I just need $3 million, please. That's good. <laughs> Skybrook, so like this is my brother's neighborhood, right? So in Huntersville, so that's why I added this one. Um, so, you know, he can just tap through nice pool and look at everything that's there. 
Um, I think you can all see now why I got into real estate because every house I'm like, squirrel, ooh, look at that. I like that front door. Look at that pool. Yeah, terrible, terrible. I'm a terrible home buyer because I like everything when I see it. So like Weddington Estates has nothing active. That's why it says, sorry, we couldn't find the results. Shaver Farm, right? I just picked all these properties that only has one. Right, so, and, and I'm looking at it from the client's view. If he wanted to add something else, the client can actually click add neighborhood. So say he started wanting to look at beach houses like Monica does, Carolina Beach, follow, 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 confirm. So as your consumer, they can add stuff themselves and then they can look at Carolina Beach houses, right? And that's how it shows up in the monthly neighborhood nurture. Does okay. that answer your question, Allison? Yeah, it does. Do they have to they have to sign in though in order to see all that, right? No, they didn't have to because it's um it's not the same thing as going to your agent website. It was one of those first things that we got is where you added neighborhoods to them. Um, you can see here when you add a neighborhood, it, you're in your contact card, you add some neighborhoods. And then you can click this preview button. It essentially set them up their own landing page with whatever neighborhoods you pick for them. So a good rule of thumb with a person, if they're not like actively buying or selling right now, and you just want a monthly way to reach out to them, where'd you grow up? Where do you live now? Where do you want to live in the future? And you set those three neighborhoods up for them so that they can look, you know, browse. Okay but it keeps them in touch with you on a regular basis. People love to look at houses. Look at me. I'm crazy. I love looking at houses. I could just sit there for hours and look at them. Um, and a lot of people are like that, right? I mean, if you didn't see the Zillow Saturday Night Live spoof, look it up on YouTube and tell me it's not true because it is and it's hilarious. You can thank me later when you're laughing uncontrollably. We good? Very good, thank you. You are so welcome, you guys. And I have this recorded, so it will get put up um, probably in the morning. It's gonna take a while for this one to convert over. Thank All right, you. we'll see you guys later on. Thanks, Monica. Have a great day. Thank you, Monica. Have a good day. You're welcome. See ya.